After spending a month living on the remote Pacific island of Saipan, we've just touched down in Seoul, the capital of South Korea. Coming from an island of less than 50,000 population to a city of over 10 million could be quite a culture shock. So today we share our top tips for a smooth arrival and start enjoying the perks of city life. So when you arrive in Seoul Incheon Airport, first thing to do is get a tea money travel card. And it cost 8,000 won and we got one each and loaded it with 30,000 won which is about $22. And you can use that on the buses and on the subways and so forth. Second thing to do is to hire a Wi-Fi box and you can connect up to three devices to it. Um, that costs 5,500 won per day and you pay at the end. So, yeah. And then third thing to do of course is get coffee, especially when you've had an overnight flight. And then after that we'll go and get our bus to our hotel. I should have also mentioned download this app, City Mapper. And then you can go get me somewhere. Okay, enter our hotel. And then it gives you the routes. So we need to take bus 6009. And it tells us it'll take 141 minutes. We'll arrive at 9.49 a.m. if we leave on the next bus, which is in six minutes. But I think we'll get the one after that because we're still drinking our coffee. We need to wake up. So we're on the bus. Ice cup PC. Lots of leg room. Grab the plane. We're staying in the Hilton Garden Inn in Gangnam area of Seoul and, and we're staying here for four nights, completely free of charge. If you want to find out how we did that, stick around till the end of the video. But first of all, I'm going to give you a tour of this king size room. So obviously king size bed and on either side of the bed we have a bedside table with various different power sockets. On that side there is a 220 volt, so a British style plug plus two USBs. And then on my side, I don't have a 220 volt, um, but I do have the controls for the heating here and the controls for the light. So I've got the ceiling light, the desk light, and the mini bar light. And here, this dims or brightens the running light along here. I forgot to mention that the digital clock on my bedside table not only tells you the time, the room humidity percentage, and the temperature, on the top it's also a wireless charger so you can charge your phone um, without needing to use a USB so maybe that's why they've not given us a USB on this side. Oh yes and we've also got a little reading light on either side of our bed which just automatically comes on when you do this and you can twist it up to have it like that or you can have it straight, straight facing on and then twist it back down and it goes off. A uh, nice comfy chair over here where you can sit and have your drink, your cup of tea or your coffee. And here we've got a desk, which I've set up my laptop. I've actually been able to work here, sitting at the desk. Nice comfy padded chair for sitting while you're working. Again, plenty of power sockets, we've got 220 volts and USB, and of course the phone to call reception. Uh, luggage storage rack big TV. So this is the mini bar area. Uh, we have a kettle, complimentary bottle of water each day and we have an ice
ice cooler if we want ice, glasses and cups. And inside here, we have a selection of drinks. English breakfast tea. I've not seen that since we left the UK. <laughs> so that's cool. And they give us little mini biscuits every day. So, and then down under here we have a drawer for storage. And under that we have the mini fridge. We also get complimentary slippers. Very cozy actually. So let's have a look in the bathroom. One hook <laughs> and big shower. Has a rain head as well as a, a regular head. And big vanity area with a shaving mirror. And this light for doing your makeup, which is cool. And then we have a very high tech toilet. So the toilet has a lot of settings. You've got cleansing, which is like a big burst of water. You can set the nozzle to pulsating. Uh, you've got bidet, which is more just like a spray of water. Uh, you can adjust the water temperature to be warmer or colder. And then you can dry. So you can select also the temperature of uh, drying and you can select the seat temperature so you can have a hot uh, toilet seat if you wish. Uh, and then it has two flushes, a bigger flush and a smaller flush. But actually, also when you stand up from the toilet, it automatically flushes, which keeps freaking me out. Like I keep forgetting that it does that. To access the wardrobe, we need to slide the bathroom door closed. And voila, we have a wardrobe. And of course, they gave us robe. And we also have an iron with an ironing board, so we don't have to request that if we need it. And down here is a safe and another drawer. So yeah, plenty of storage, lots of space. Yeah, let me tell you how we got to stay here for four nights, completely free of charge. So with the American Express Gold Card, uh, you pay a yearly fee of £160, but you can collect points. So you get one point for every pound that you spend, and then every three months you get a bonus of two and a half thousand points. Uh, so you, once you've collected enough points, you can use those to purchase rewards with airlines, with hotels and various other uh, retailers. So for UK customers, um, American Express has three hotel partners that you can transfer points to and those are Hilton, Radisson and Marriott. So when we knew we were coming to stay in Seoul, we looked up what hotels were here and found that there was this Hilton Garden Inn in Gangnam. So very central, very uh, easy area to get around. We're like a two minute walk from the subway. So it seemed a really good uh, place to stay. Then what you do, you go onto the Hilton website and create a Hilton Honours account. Uh, and then what you do is you can check how many points it will cost for each night of your stay. So for us, for the first three nights of our stay, would be 39,000 points per night. And the fourth night, because it was a Saturday night, was slightly more, so that was 50,000 points. So in total, it would cost us 167,000 Hilton Honours points to stay here for four nights. So then we go back to American Express account and you get two Hilton Honours points for every one American Express point that you transfer. So we transferred 85,000 American Express points because you have to transfer them in increments of 5,000. So that gave us 170,000 uh, Hilton Honours points. And then all you need to do is make the booking either on their website or you can phone them. And voila, we get four nights stay for absolutely free in this beautiful hotel. We're staying in Gangnam, which you may have heard of from the song Gangnam Style, which I uh, was referring to this area but it's kind of like a style of living that it represents kind of a hip and a trendy new new area to, to live in so they actually have a monument for the Gangnam Hands over here we can't we can't not visit this while we're in Gangnam <laughs> oh, 
We're in the Starfield Mall and it's super cool because it's got like this interactive directory. So you just like have to press here, language, choose English, and then it shows you all the places within the mall. And then choose where you want to go. Find shop. And then fashion. Uh, where would you like to go? Let's choose number. Search routes. So it tells you it's over here. You need to go up there. Ta -da! It shows us how to get there. So clever. More books than you'll ever be able to read in a lifetime. So we've come to California Pizza Kitchen. Now you're probably wondering, why come to Seoul and order pizza? Well, Phil saw that they do a gluten-free cauliflower crust and he got excited. Because uh, he's not had pizza since we left home. <laughs> I had quite a lot of pizza in uh, Saipan. They do some good pizza there. But Phil's uh, not been able to have pizza in over two months. So same, same pizza. Yeah, barbecue chicken pizza. But Phil's one is on a cauliflower crust. How is it? Good. How's the crust? Looks quite thin. Like if you compare it. Oh. You compare it to this one, which is quite yeah, soft. But uh, yeah, if you're happy. That's good. Our next stop is Lotte Tower, the tallest building in South Korea and sixth tallest in the world. building in the world. Disappointingly, much like our experience two years earlier at the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, the views were obscured by a thick haze lying over the city. Oh, there's Latu World. Thank you. 
water. I can see part of the river came over to the north outside of the city. Having a drink in the, the Soul Sky Cafe on the 122nd floor. Mm. Phil went for a strawberry smoothie, and I have a violet latte. Still needing caffeine. Feeling tired today. <laughs> We decided to stay for sunset and take in the city lights after dark. before heading back via the Lotte World Mall, which has a seafood restaurant with a massive fish tank for our front entrance. Join us in the next video when we're taking a day trip to the most militarised border zone in the world. Ironically, known as the Demilitarised Zone or DMZ for short. See you there!